Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Julia Monte, a women's fiction author, and today I'm very excited. I have a guest. Uh, her name is Kevin Lyon, and she is a um, literary agent, right? She owns her own literary agency, and Kevin and I worked together, gosh, what, like 10 years ago? Probably, yeah. Yeah, probably about 10 years ago. Uh, and I think you were just starting your agency back then, right? Probably, yeah, so. yeah. Two, so. 2009, it's been 11 years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think as my, my, my book came out of that year, I think around 2010, I'm, I'm really not sure. But mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's been a long time ago and uh, she's been, I think, hugely success, successful from what I've uh, read on your website. So I'll let you introduce yourself uh, so you can tell me a little bit about you and a little bit about your agency. Yes, I'm Kevin Lyon, a literary agent, and I have an agency with Jill Marshall. Um, we both were previously, many years ago, at another agency together here in San Diego, and we struck out on our own in 2009. So we are 11 years, soon to be 12 years, because February is our anniversary uh, month. Um, so we've been at it for quite a long time, and the agency has grown. We have um, ourselves, uh, Patricia Nelson um, is on the team, uh, Deborah Richkin is on the team, Shannon Hassan and Jolene Haley, who is new. Um, and everybody does a little bit of something different. Jill and I primarily do women's fiction and Jill does a fair amount of nonfiction. I do just a smattering of nonfiction. I represent Rachel Hollis and Dave Hollis. Um, but not a lot of nonfiction. It's really not my area of expertise. Um, so my focus nine out of 10 times is usually going to be women's fiction. And I have developed kind of a niche with historical fiction. I have a huge list of fabulous historical novelists. Um, they call themselves the lionesses, which is really fun. And they are all super supportive of each other and when, when the Historical Novel Society is in sway, then they all get together. But um, that's an area that is of particular interest to me. But I do contemporary women's fiction, too. Um, and I love that area. Um, so, is that still selling well? Yeah. Yeah, it really yeah. is. I, um, I have several that I've sold recently. Um, Jennifer Probst, we moved her from... Um, she still does romance and we just did a new romance deal with Montlake, but we also um, started a stream of women's fiction with her upcoming book in January called Our Italian Summer, which is fabulous. If you want to escape to Italy and you can't quite get there yet because of travel challenges, this book will do it for you. Um, Victoria Shade, uh, she was a dog trainer in her previous life and she just writes delight women's fiction with dogs, which obviously are a huge oh. um, thing that I love. And um, Jane Agaro, a book called Ties It Tether. Uh, she's Nigerian and it's just a fabulous book. It's gotten rave reviews. So I do a, a smattering of women's fiction kind of across different areas um, and a lot of historical fiction. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That sounds interesting. Uh, you know, I actually what celebrated my 30th anniversary this year. And we had tickets to go to Italy. Yeah. Uh, obviously it got canceled. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yeah. My daughter yeah. was supposed to be married in Italy in August of this past uh, year. Uh, and we now postponed it till the end of July. So that's looking like it could happen. Next year. Yeah. 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 July, end of July, 2021 is... Uh. We're going as long as Italy lets us in. We're going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might read that book just to kind of you know get into that again. We were all so excited to go, and then it's like oh, now it's a year later. And I yeah. thought you know I bought the tour, and I was like, okay, well, we can't go, so we're just going to get the money back, and then just maybe do something else. And they were the the tour company said, oh no. <laughs> Oh, no, no. So now you gotta, well, they give you credit for a new tour. Yeah, they did. Okay. They did. So, oh, it's yeah, so. worth it. And yes, yeah. read our Italian summer because they go. Yes, on yes. Sounds good. Is it out already? It's coming out in uh, January. January. Yeah. Okay. Soon. Oh, very soon. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. My yeah. birthday's in January, so I can put that on my birthday list. <laughs> yes, there you go. Oh, it's fabulous. Yeah. All right. Uh, so fantastic. Then um, so one of the questions I was going to ask you actually answered is like what, you know, what, what, what you're selling and what books are out there. So that sounds good. Um, so 
uh, what do you think? Uh, I think one of the cool things that I like about your agency is that it's in California. Um, mm -hmm. But what, what do you find unique about your agency or what, what will uh, people that are looking for an agent find unique about your agency? Um, you know, I think so many agencies now are virtual. In other words, they're not based in New York anymore. Obviously, there still are and some yeah. there are good ones. But um, we have long learned and I think proven that you don't need to be in New York to be um, a strong literary agency in this business. It, as long as you have a phone and a computer, you can kind of almost be anywhere. Yeah. Um, and what is unique about us? We... We are one of the top agencies in fiction between Jill and I in terms of number of deals. Um, so I think you will find that we, we really know those areas that we're working in, we really know them well. Um, you're getting great depth of experience here between uh, across the board with our agents. Um, and Jill and I have been at it for a very long time now. And I have experience in the business other than agenting. I used to work on the distribution side of the business. So I kind of understand the different types of discounts and co-op programs and those kinds of things with retailers, which um, are often just Greek to people that are, are at the tail end, we're authors and agents. They're just, that's not a part of the business that most people have been exposed to. And it's where I started. So for me, you know, understanding the ins and outs of Costco and even Target and how some of those accounts work on the front end um, I, really helps uh, my clients kind of understand that process. Like, why can't I get into Target or Costco or, you know, whatever the question yeah, may yeah. be, um, or even interpreting a discount to those um, uh, channels of distribution on a contract is, has proven to be super helpful. So I think you get depth of experience, certainly expertise in the genres that we specialize in and kind of um, a broad breadth of exposure to different facets of the publishing industry, which I think really helps. The other thing I think that we do, and I think most, many agents do, but not all. I, I always find that one here, complaint I hear about agents is that authors don't, it's like they never hear from their agent or it takes them forever to respond or whatever. It's, Jill and I are both, pretty neurotic about email and follow-up is um, a little too uh, immediate sometimes for some of my authors. <laughs> I'll get an email. Can you call me? And I'm boom. Wait, wait, is that you? <laughs> no, okay. So I, that's something that we kind of pride ourselves on and yeah, is, that's um, great. Uh, goes with our neurotic natures, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's fantastic. Cause I, I can tell you from the writer's side, that's what we're thinking. It's like, Oh, I have a question. It's like, Wait, I emailed her like five minutes ago. <laughs> <It's good. Yeah. laughs> That's right. No, I yeah. tell my, I usually tell my clients, like, if you haven't heard from me in that day, you may have gone into my junk mail folder, which I'm <laughs> terrible about checking. So you need to email me again. Yeah. Sometimes if I don't have the answer, I'll say I'll get it. But I, at least I want you to make sure that I saw right. your email. Right. Yeah. And that, no, that, that, I think that's wonderful, honestly, because it is, especially when you just submit something to an agent and you're wondering, what did she think? Does she like it? Did she get it? Did she, you know, you're, you're, all these questions are going through your mind. So, yeah. Now, I now I, to be honest, that's with my clients, with your with clients. Queries, right. Yeah. Queries, right. I'm not that fast, but the, I take a quick look at them and then I move them into a folder. And then uh, my assistant, Patricia, reviews uh, queries for me. I see, I like do a quick scan to see if it's someone that one of my authors referred, someone that's writing in a genre that I'm particularly intrigued by. Um, and then I usually just move it into the query folder if it doesn't immediately catch my eye. So there are some that I request myself directly that don't go in the folder for Patricia, um, <clears throat> but probably 95% of them I, I move over and then she does them in batches for me. So that's not quite as fast as as so what, uh, what, what would you think is a good time? So if somebody is a brand new person who's querying you that you, is not your client, how long uh, could they expect to wait? And should they contact you? Or does, does that, uh, do you encourage people to contact you? To well, if they haven't heard from me and it's been, you know, more than two or three weeks, they definitely should contact. We've had... Um, between the transfer, uh, between Patricia and I, occasionally something will go astray. 
So I never mind if someone says, you know, I haven't heard from you and, you know, I'll see somebody submitted back in October. I'm like, oh my God, we're, we're caught up through December 9th, you know? Right. And that's true. We are right now caught up through <laughs> the end of last week. So if you haven't heard from me, then please check in. You either have to have heard, you will hear from me or Patricia, one or the other. We respond to all of them. We don't just not respond, which some agencies do for queries. They only respond if they're interested. We, our objective is to respond to everyone. Um, you may not like the answer, but we will, <laughs> we will respond for sure. Is there a time of year that is busier when it would probably take a little longer? Um, well, this time of year is feels busy to me because we, um, you're closing your year, you have all the tax work and stuff coming up for clients. Mm -hmm. And even though we, you know, are a big agency in terms of number of deals and that kind of thing, we run a pretty small tight ship. Mm -hmm. um, so Jill and I are hands on with a lot of it. We obviously have bookkeepers and accountants and all of that stuff. But um, when it comes to the year end stuff, we're pretty hands on. So that, that feels like a very busy time, but then it starts quieting down on the email front with editors on holiday and yeah. uh, that kind of thing. So is there, no, I mean, there's kind of lulls in the summer a little bit when uh, it feels like a lot of people are on vacation, but the email really never stops okay. because yeah, I mean, I feel like right now, even though editors are most, for the most part, they're checking out after December 18th for two mm -hmm. weeks, my clients aren't, they're home. Like, yeah working in their home offices like we all are so right. um i'll be here up through you know the 23rd of december and then try and take a few days off but um it doesn't ever really stop it's kind of one of the drawbacks i guess to us all working out of home offices potentially yeah, yeah. We're working all the time yeah yeah for sure and now is email the way that uh you like to be contacted so somebody who's looking for an agent uh, do you prefer that they send you an email or a, you know, paper query? Definitely email. Yeah. Email. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Definitely we're email. We're done with papers. <laughs> no, no, we don't, we don't take any, um, any old snail mail queries. Um, and okay. the telephone, I wouldn't, if I don't yeah. recognize a number for the most part, we're not usually picking up or letting it go to voicemail. And that's just awkward. Right. <laughs> right. Honest. I would much rather read your, your query, a well-crafted query and get really enthusiastic. And then I'll request the full of your manuscript if I'm interested. Um, I, don't, okay. I don't mess around with you know 50 pages or anything. I used to do that and I don't anymore. Just send me the full. Yeah. I may really? only read okay. 50 pages, Yeah, <laughs> but I want the whole thing there if I love what I'm reading. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's actually one of the questions I wrote down was, um, what, uh, how much do you want? And then how polished do you as an agent expect the manuscript to be? Um, so if you're a brand new writer, one of the things that I'm, I'm um, now trying to write about in my blogs and trying to teach upcoming writers is, you know, make sure that your work is that you're going through it. Make sure that somebody is looking at your writing that you, you know, you don't just finish your rough draft and then send it off. So either, uh, and I'm not sure, so maybe you can tell me here, but um, either have an editor look at it, maybe a developmental editor, but a lot of people don't want to spend that kind of money. But so what do you suggest? Uh, Cause I know agents want something that is almost ready to be published, right? Or am I wrong? Yeah, well, you want something that the author feels is absolutely their best work and ready to okay. share. Um, because if they jump the gun on it or you send something over with track changes still in it or you know typos on the first page, yeah. It definitely is something that we notice. Yes. <laughs> um, and the truth is, is there really is no rush in, I mean, it's, you, you really, for the most part, get one shot. I do have people that will say, can I, you've looked at this before, it's now been completely revised and I worked with an editor or whatever it may be. Will you yeah. look again? And usually I will, but I've never had one of those, um, come work out on the second try may I I hope one does at one point yeah. but the, the your best bet is to get it right the first time if you can at all and just 
don't believe that you're in some sort of a self-imposed deadline right. to get your manuscript out to agents because um, it would be much, much wiser to right. put your very best work out um, and not, not mess around with it. So I'm, I'm usually looking for something that the author believes is truly ready to go. And then I may, if we decide to go forward, I may have suggestions for them and we'll work on it before it's ready for submission. Um, okay. And that, you know, that usually takes, depends on the work, but it usually takes a little, a little while, not too long. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, that's good. I, I, don't, right, I don't tell people to go to developmental editors because it is expensive. It's expensive, um, yeah. But so if you're going traditional publishing route, then you probably don't need to have well, an might, editor looking. I mean, for your own confidence, you might, but um, I think that uh, if you are a gifted writer, it's going to come through in the narrative. And I've taken people on simply because I love the voice and I'm willing to work on the story with them. But okay. look, there are many very good developmental editors out there. I would never minimize the impact that they can have on a manuscript. It's expensive. So it's not something I'm going to tell people that they should do um, right. because a lot of people can't afford it. And in many cases, the work that I've sold has not been developmentally edited. edited. Probably most cases it hasn't. Um, okay. But not to say that, you know, somebody can't help shape your manuscript just to get it over the finish line a little bit. Right, right, right. And there's a lot of options too, to have other people read your, you can have, you have your, some people like critique groups, some people have a friend that can read it. So it's always right. good, I think, to have somebody read it. Right, yeah, before. I agree. Yeah. Yes, but before sending, especially to a brand, some an agent that you haven't worked with before. Yeah. Yeah. True. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what kind of advice would you give unpublished writers uh, who have just finished their novel? And so, what's what's the first step? So you've just finished your novel, the, really, and you feel like it's ready to go. The, and they feel it's the ready. <laughs> next most important step then is to craft a really good query letter. Um, and there are, there are books out there on this and plenty of blogs and that kind of thing. Um, a, a good query letter makes all the difference to getting people to look at your book. Um, and I, I tell people to sort of read a description on the back of a book. You, you want that kind of copy that is encouraging readers to put the, pick the book up off, off the shelf. So it's, it's similar kind of approach you don't want to like you know open your first sentence with this would make the most amazing film ever and <laughs> that kind of stuff no right. just don't do it <laughs> just craft the most professional descriptive query letter that describes your book in a succinct direct and pointed way and ideally close to a similar narrative voice in the description to that of your book itself and then a little bit about you especially if you've got particular writing credentials or something like that. But um, that that really, that letter is what is gonna open the door to getting okay. someone to ask to see your manuscript. Okay. It really okay. is. And if you've got, yeah, yeah. if you have friends that are writers, if they like their agents, often, you know, a referral, I will always look at, at one of my clients' referrals, always, because okay. it's just what we do. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, so, and if, if one of your clients that you trust is recommending right. someone, right, yeah, makes right. sense. And a lot of times they'll say, I haven't read it, so no <laughs> they contact you, and that's fine. I'll still take a look. Um, and, you know, every now, I think, I think I got Kate Quinn through a referral. I mean, we had met at Historical Novel Society, but um, yeah. she came to me. Uh, she was in need of an agent and um, I represented several of her friends. So, and I was already a big fan of her writing. So that was yeah. kind of a slam <laughs> dunk, but yeah, I mean, a referral is nice. That's for right, sure. Right, right. Okay, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so uh, obviously you represent unpublished writers, right? So it's not just people who have written before? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's see what else. Um, I think you answered uh, whether you, you accept partials or full, so full manuscripts. And well, we do take a partial, but it depends on the book. So for okay. example, um, 
I am, um, partials generally are, if you have a track record, so that would be a published author in most cases. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm working with a couple writers right now where I know that editors are looking for this kind of work, maybe uh, a diverse background or something like that. And maybe you were an indie author before, so I know you can write. And I'm working with a particular author, for example, to get her, a proposal in shape. And I know I have editors that want to see it because it is something they are looking for. So if you're fortunate enough to have an idea or something that is so amazing, or you're an author with a diverse background that the industry is searching for, then um, occasionally we can go out on a partial. Okay. It's okay. more the exception to the rule though. More the sure. exception. Yeah. yeah. And so what do you see, you know, in your, in your um, kind of like your fortune telling globe or something, <laughs> 2021, what do you, how do you see publishing? So we were talking earlier um, just about the publishing industry and how a lot of people are working from home now. And I, what do you see as like, what, what's going to be, what are they going to be buying in 2021? Are they going to, um, are they going to be interested in lighter books just because of the year we've had? So if you're watching this video in the future, we're in 2020 now, <laughs> we've, uh, hence the bad hair, no hair right, stylist. Right. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, do, are, are they, do you think they're going to be looking for lighter books or? I think, I think it's a little bit of all of the above and they lo always look for more of what's working. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, the historical novel genre always tends to be a pretty proven performer and we're seeing um, really solid numbers for print runs and that kind of thing for early 2021. And then there's just the delightful reads like Our Italian Summer or Victoria Shade's um, new book. Um, so, and that that is more just reads you can sink into um, and not have something horrible happen. <laughs> so I, I do think that there is there is definitely an appetite for that kind of work on the publishing side. Um, but I, I feel like they are, they're never gonna say don't write in a particular area if yeah. an author is really passionate about it because you just don't know, it could be the next most amazing thing in that genre. So I, I would never say to somebody, don't write something, yeah. um, but know that Right now, I have a hard time seeing a market for it. Um, so I can give you that kind of feedback, but um, if it's what yeah, you yeah. have to write, then, you know, that's right. what you have to do. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so just mostly, I guess it's just good writing that- it, And good storytelling. Yeah, good storytelling. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I think that is at the crux of so many successful authors, one of my, clients, Jennifer Armentrout, she's probably one of the best storytellers, just yeah. true storytellers um, that grabs you and you just do not want to leave the page. And, mm. um, and her book crosses genres. They cross young adult into adult just because mm. she is such a good storyteller. And you even see it from her Facebook posts. I mean, she can yeah. tell a story. So <laughs> that that and obviously writing the, the writing quality um, right. all of those things are what makes something work where you thought you weren't looking for something in a particular genre but you got so caught up in the pages and there you are so you got you're going to figure out a way to market it then okay okay um so what is it that you love most about your job i was reading some pages of one of my authors um new books that she's working on last night, Stephanie Thornton. Um, and I read the first 50 pages of the novel that's a work in process. And I just flew through the pages. And um, it didn't matter that I was, you know, sitting down to finish them at nine o'clock at night because it was, they were just that good. So you have to yeah. remind yourself that this is work, you know? Yeah. So I'm reading. I can't imagine a better job, honestly, to sit and read for a living. It's, it's hard just... to find that reading time, though. Yes. Us, so you got to pay authors first when the money comes in. We turn that right around. Right. And 
keeping up with the email because we respond neurotically to everybody on email. And so right. it's, it's hard to find the time to read, especially yes. on full manuscripts. Those you are usually got to block off time in a weekend. Um, but occasionally I can during the week, which is always yeah, uh, yeah. a little bit of a pinch me moment. Like, okay, this is work. Uh, if the book right. is as good as most of the ones that all of the ones that I'm reading from my client list are there. It's, it really is those kind of moments where you're just like completely yeah. getting caught up in it and remembering that you're supposed to catch the typos and help with the edits. <laughs> their editor. <laughs> That is, uh, yeah, I can, I can imagine. I think that would be my favorite part too. Just getting so, um, I guess, engrossed in a, in a good story. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's great. It That's really great. is. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Um, is there anything else that you want to add that you would, uh, you, no, your no. agency or... Well, I would say for people who are watching and are looking for an agent um, is to look at our, uh, everyone on our website page. We've got a couple um, uh, hungrier agents, I guess you might say. Um, yeah. My list is pretty full, but I'm, I'm not closed. I've never closed to queries. Uh, I just am only taking on a very limited number of new authors. I know Jill is actively looking. Um, Patricia is a superstar in sort of middle grade and YA, and she's doing a little bit of women's fiction. Um, Shannon, the same. She does it more sort of literary um, and some young adult um, fiction. Jolene is um, really just beginning to build her list, um, and she's doing uh, mainly, I think, young adult and some adult fiction as well. Um, Deborah mainly does illustrated kind of stuff in cookbooks, so her list is much different skew than the rest of us. But so would she uh, be the agent for nonfiction? Because it sounds like a lot of the one what uh, the editors or I'm sorry, the agents that you've just mentioned are fiction. fiction. Yeah. Yeah. No, Jill would probably be the primary agent for nonfiction. For nonfiction. Jill does a lot of business books and okay. political books, and she's done a lot of that. Um, and Deborah mainly is like illustrated cookbooks and that that's sort of her area of expertise okay. and passion. And I think she does a smattering of fiction uh, or she has in the past. I'm not sure if she's actively looking. Um, okay. Yeah, but Jill, Jill's got a really good business book list. So I think the, the one area that we don't do a lot in is, um, is picture books for kids. And that okay. is a, a very unique skill. Um, yeah. And there are some good picture book agents. Um, the Andrea Brown agency, they've got a couple agents in San Diego and they do a great job with picture books too. So there's a lot of really good agents here in California. Um, and I guess, I don't know, the one thing I always encourage someone is when you're ready to go on submission, target the agents that you want to go to and go to set, go to many um, targeted though. Don't just, you know, we all get occasionally those queries that they've, gone through publisher's marketplace and just like put everybody's address in <laughs> that will never work right <laughs> for anybody. But if you do your homework, um, there's a lot of really good agents out there and um, you just need to find the one that looks like it's a good match for you. And okay. one of the, th one of the ways that I think is a good way to look is the books that you like to read. And if you're writing in a similar genre is often in the acknowledgements authors will um, thank their agent and then you can find out an agent's name um, okay and that's one now way if you uh, like if somebody sent you a query and you felt like well this isn't really for me but it is for Jill would you do you yes, share all queries? the time okay. yeah yeah okay. yeah she does a lot more um, sort of mystery and suspense I do some um, but more thriller -esque is she's much more expert in that area than I am so I I often send her queries in that area Okay. Um, and for more literary event stuff, I'll send them over to Shannon, or if I get YA or middle grade, I'll forward them on to um, Patricia or Shannon. We definitely okay. share within. That's the good. That's good. Yeah. Cause you might not, um, you know, you might get, you might, you might think, oh yeah, I want to, you know, send it to Kevin. I just saw this great video and I want to send it to her, but uh, you know, you might not uh, be the one that would best represent that person. So yeah, that's right. good to know. Right. That's good to right. know. For sure. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, yeah. Thank you, Kevin. It was really nice uh, seeing you again and connecting with you again. And I'm, I'm really uh, happy that you're doing so well. And that, you know, uh, I'm going to definitely look for some of those books that <laughs> you, you just sold that are coming out. They sound great. Yeah, there's uh, many. Hopefully... I love to talk about my authors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's <laughs> definitely good. And uh, hopefully we'll see each other uh, at some point. I'm, I'm hoping that next year there'll be some conferences. I haven't been to conferences in a while, and I'm really looking yeah. after being in all year. <laughs> I think I want to be out again. I know. They just actually made the Historical Novel Society a virtual conference in June, which oh, I'm okay. very sad about. But I think June is going to be kind of right on that cusp where... Maybe the second people, half of the year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was actually supposed so, to be in San Diego. When was it? Um, last March, right when everything started to close down. There was something going on out there and they'd asked me to come and speak. And I said, sure, you know, I was really excited to go out because again, I hadn't been out in a while and everything closed, right? <laughs> right yeah. when everything was happening. And I think, I don't know exactly where it was going to be. Uh, I think Coronado or something. It's like, oh, we're just out there. Yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully someday, second half of 21 and <laughs> into 2022. Yes, yes. Who would have thought? We're living I history. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you again. And it was great oh, talking to you. Yeah, Have a great care. holiday break. Yes, you too. Happy holidays. Thank you. And we'll see Bye. you in the future. Uh-huh. Bye. Take care.